right, I think we're good. Let's give it a second to broadcast a link. Always a challenge setting these little things up from my phone. And there we go. And we're back. All right. So what I thought might be fun is to have a look at the two different versions of Wellington's Victory and uh, going to caveat everything I have to say around two key things. Number one, I have... Um, I just come off the back of a 24 hour hackathon of which I was hosting a team. Uh, so I wasn't there the entire time, but I was at the office until uh, 1.30 this morning and back in there by 8 a.m. So I'm feeling a little weary. I did catch a little nap, but at some point if I start to veer off into crazy land, that is gonna be one of the reasons why. And second thing to note here is that this is the very, very first Four map or what I would call monster game that I played ever uh, and my recollections of the game are uh, probably not what everyone else's are and uh, and it's just well, we just got a little error message here so it may be a little bit different than what you're expecting <clears throat> so um, so I'm not going to talk in detail about the game and the game mechanics and all the rest of it for Wellington's Victory, nor am I going to talk about the new Wellington's Victory game mechanics. And let's just have a look at the two games together, see where, you know, compare the maps and the counter art and stuff like that. And let's just kind of check it out and see what the story is. And then at some point in the near future, I hope to actually get the second edition onto the table, probably a smaller scenario to start with. It won't be quite... Uh, the full campaign uh, by myself, I don't think. But uh, if it if it gets exciting, then maybe we'll uh, we'll reset and get started again. All right. So, thanks to those folks that have joined. Looks like someone joined in, gave it a thumbs down, and then left. So you pal can go kiss my ass. All right. Uh, let's have a look at that. Have a look at this. The uh, art, of course, is uh, somewhat iconic, right? The uh, closing of the doors at uh, Hugomont. Uh, in fact, I've been here and seen a statue of this with the chap pushing against the door and all that sort of fun stuff, very classic stuff. Uh, very nice. Uh, you've got your uh, rule book and all the rest of it, which is 27 pages, including some hefty player notes and things like that. It's the, the old SBI case system. Uh, it's... I recall this game being very challenging to play from, from the asymmetrical sequence of play standpoint. Uh, we didn't really run into or cotton on to the little hack that you could use with you know, breaking down units into massive stacks of skirmishes and kind of breaking the game that way. We were highly... Uh, frustrated with the charge zones and artillery and stuff like that that uh, that was problematic for us but we did play the campaign uh we swapped sides so we played it twice uh and not to conclusion obviously enough because we were kind of rookie kids at the time didn't really know what we were doing we'd play 5 10 15 20 turns of something get a feel for it, then reset, maybe swap sides and, and play, you know, play as much as we could at that point. Uh, this game took up an entire room for us when we had it set up. Uh, just the, the layout of the room was very small and I recall having to stand on tippy toes to walk around the edge of the, the back edge of the map there to, uh, to get in there and see what was going on. So it's pretty interesting stuff. Got lots of fond memories of playing this game. So... The map art, of course, was always, and this is the TCR, TC, uh, TCR, TSR version of the game. I've got the old flat pack SBI version in the back, but I don't have the maps for that. Uh, uh, so I have all the punch counters, though. Um, so let's have a look at the maps and the counters, and we'll kind of kind of meander through this and go for it from there. Uh, Feel free to say hi and introduce yourself. And if you want to mention whether or not you've played this game, that'd be interesting to see from you, see what your level of interest is. 
Uh, so let's have a quick look at the counters first. So the Nederlanders, uh, we can see their, there's their forces, the KGL, Hano Hanoverians and the, and the Brunswickers. And some info counters and in the French, uh, sorry, uh, Prussian, I should say. They have the darker color, darker color blue, the richer color blue. And then we've got our French army here, which, you know, these are all uh, not particularly printed very well, first of all, but uh, <laughs> they are, um, you know, they're okay to read. The, the, the crosses on them are uh, annoying, I, I found. Even back then, I found them to be annoying. Let me zoom in there for you a little bit. And you can see these guys here as well. And then the British forces as well. See the offsets here a little bit better, but not much. And then there's a whole stack of information counters that uh, you're gonna put underneath uh, to keep track of your steps. focus on the maps now. I'll have a look at the maps and then we'll, we'll, we'll bust out DG's uh, version and lay it out on top and maybe do a little compare and contrast. Now, let's see who's joined us now. Hey Devin, good to see you man. I'm glad you could uh, check in with me. All right, so the, the color scheme is uh, rich and vibrant, uh, well known for its vibrance. Uh, here's a label, a label a la, a la, uh, alliance, I should say. Uh, Hugomont is here. Now the hex scale, I could probably get the rules out and tell you, but I think it's 150, 150 or 200 the hex. Let me just double check that for you. Uh, the morale uh, record, uh, record recording exercise here is also another thing that was uh, quite unique to this game uh, for the time. Anyway, I, I found that. Fascinating as well, having to uh, spend morale to activate units and things like that. Okay, 2,000 counters, where's the scale? So we can tell you what's going on here. Yeah, it's 100 yards, okay. So very small scale, right? Uh, most games uh, in this era at this sort of grand tactical level were usually 150 or 200 meter hexes from what I've seen anyway. Uh, the ones that I own and the ones that I've played. So we can see that uh, at 100 meters, Hugomont is uh, uh, a full hex here with the uh, very thick walls around the, uh, the fortified buildings. It's a big farmhouse. And this is a long stretch, straight stretch of garden wall, which of course gets broken up by, the, by all this uh, hex grid. And then of course there were the orchards and stuff like that. And they had uh, peep holes through all of here. And you could, s there was actually, I've actually started to find, they're doing some excavation along this side of the wall here on the interior. And they're starting to find uh, French uh, musket shells on the inside. And based on the angle uh, of penetration into the ground and, well not the angle of penetration, but where the shots are, uh, have landed, they were, they surmised that uh, the French were shooting over and down uh, the wall, meaning that they were basically standing on the bodies of the dead chaps that were trying to rush the wall. So and a large number of basically suicidal uh, assaults on this wall, this garden wall section here. Very tragic and brave at the same time. They... This is all very different now, of course. The crossroads here, there's this big mound here where they dug out a bunch of dirt uh, as a monument. Uh, so you don't get a full appreciation for the lie of the land here, but uh, there's, a, you know, there's a rising hill here and you can physically see some of the differences there when you, uh, when you jump into, uh, when you get into this area. This is a privately owned and no one uh, gets to go in there uh, on tour or anything like that. Unless you're a famous author, I think uh, a French chap wrote a book. Uh, what was it, an English guy? It was an English guy wrote a book recently 
and I'd have to dig up the name of it. I'll, I'll try and stick it in the notes when I uh, get offline. But uh, he was actually allowed to visit and, uh, and had some remarkable comments on the structure of the building and the, what you could see even this to this day of, uh, from, from the battle. So that's fascinating. And so from this crossroad, so I've stood right here at this crossroad and looked to Papolette right there. And it looks like it's a fucking really long way, but it's not. It's, you can see the, the spires and the, the towers in Papolette. Uh, there's a horse, um, horse and carriage center. Uh, it's now a horse training area uh, over here in Papolette. And it has um, a really interesting uh, high arched du double doors. So it was obviously like a coach station or something like that at one point. Uh, very, very uh, high defensive properties there as well. And so, okay, so we've got all the terrain and this is where the, the fields, where the, the Scots and the Fusiliers were and whatnot. Um, Fred Placineau is down here, or Placinois. And uh, as you can see, all this terrain, this is just open, undulating, flat, very close to one another. You know, the, the, the positions were, that were so tight here, which to me makes for not a particularly interesting battle because you're, you're, you're set piece right, right here. And there's not a lot of maneuvering action gonna happen. So a, a lot of games, while it's a famous battle, a lot of games struggle to make this an interesting situation because you, know, you don't really get the time to get into any maneuvering. And then you had the uh, uh, wet conditions uh, for the French early in the morning because of the torrential downpours the night before, which is or argued about quite a lot, but everything I've seen and read over there, and I was actually there when it was wet, very wet, and it gets mushy, and uh, well, this is all farmland, right? This is gentle rolling uh, uh, hills. It's very fascinating. All right, so that, that's the maps, right? Prussians obviously come in over on this side, uh, in, in this area, they, they, there's a road uh, here, this road here, they, they came down or, or across from over here, somewhere like that. Uh, I didn't get a chance to get out uh, much further into that terrain when I was visiting there, but there, there is that. So uh, let's, let's pull out the Wellington's Victory Box. And we'll get the maps going here and we'll have a look at it and see, uh, see what's going on. Uh, we'll compare the counters side by side in a minute if I remember to do that. I'll probably let's take the lid off the other one so I don't forget. The sounds of mayhem. Okay. Let's pull these maps out. So big charts here, first off, you'll notice that, combat procedures, CRT, shocks, uh, there's a, a significant number of formations you can choose to adopt in this game and they have a, a variety of impacts and special rules. Uh, uh, the impact on adopting this type of formation will uh, uh, improve or reduce the ability of the enemy to have a reaction fire or reaction movement or reaction charge, as the case may be. Movement allowances and all that sort of good stuff. There's charts, combat procedures. I think there's just that's so just the same. Repeated. <coughs> Put that over there. And this is the display for each of the armies. Lay them all out. There's a TRC. Terrain key, turn record chart, and uh, I guess that's for the Prussian arrivals. And the French army and the Prussian army. So we've got all of that there. Let's go over this guy. He's separate. So there's that. Pretty nicely laid out by the looks of it. I don't know how functional it is because I haven't goofed around with it. I do know that there are errata counters on way to me. I registered the game 
online and have a set of errata counters coming because uh, apparently there's already errata. And it's kind of a, a bucket of dice uh, combat resolution system. You'll never throw more than six die, but you will be uh, uh, adding and subtracting die to the combat and or defense situation based on whatever the DRMs or whatever the dice modifiers are, how many dice you get to chuck. And it's uh, the typical, uh, you know, a six is a hit, five is a hit in certain circumstances and stuff like that. And one, two, three is a miss, I think. Uh, I've only skimmed the rules, so uh, there might be a little bit of bullshit and all that. Now, first thing we can notice here, much larger hexes. Each individual hex is larger. And I don't have the rules handy because they're up by my bedside. Uh, but the, the uh, hexes are larger, and I believe the scale is slightly bigger. I believe it's 150 or 200, but I... Oh, I'm happy to be wrong there. Okay, so there's the hand, hey. And that is gonna go which way? This way, by the looks of it. Put that over there. I'll just put this over here. I want the camera to fall off the table. That's my hand over the edge here. I can keep them on, it's gonna go down here. By the looks of it, it's a similar scale. It's based on what I'm seeing for the, uh, the various, the various terrain features. So we'll just lay these out. Let's have a look at this for a start, so you can see here. So here's the uh, decision game, second edition on the left, and uh, the other stuff on the right, first edition on the right. And this is the TSR version, so uh, yeah, the colors, were, if, if at all possible, worse than the TSR edition, if I recall. And something about the yellows is a little, little richer. Now this is pressing this, this pressing mark goes down here, and this guy goes here. Let's get this laid out and have a look. You can see, obviously, uh, even at a glance, this is much more attractive uh, set maps, just to the eye, right? Uh, let's see if we can put that over there. Move the counters. this here. Uh, let's see. Roughly here by the looks of it. So there you can see the full terrain. The, these are kind of a yellow, a yellow color, but they're obviously a lot more muted. You can see uh, Hugomont here. So similar uh, scaling here, a little more detail with the, the, the slopes and uh, and whatnot. Uh, we, can, we can have a look at what those terrain types are specifically if we want to. But you'll see that it's the same amount of hexes to denote where the fortified positions were and the garden walls are. So roughly the same scale, just bigger hexes. So I think that'll make gameplay in this very congested area and this very congested area and this very congested area a lot easier because we'll have uh, these larger hexes to play with so there's Papalette there the sand pit and the hay you'll notice that the orientation of the road is a little different here this this road uh, went kind of straighter I don't know if there's a compass rose on here somewhere that we could compare where hmm. I don't see a compass rose um, compare the exact orientation of the map so maybe they're slightly skewed but that does look like it's moving in a different direction uh, compared to the other one I'll lift it up in a second uh, I'll answer some of these questions in a second uh, so, the, uh, yeah, let's lift up this guy and see. Yeah, so, I guess, I guess it's just a more pronounced, you can see that, two side by side there. This, this road curves, away, this road curves away more uh, aggressively uh, to here. And then you've got this uh, degradation in the terrain for both of them. 
right? Now, I, I will say that based on my walk around, uh, in particular at Hugomont, uh, this terrain here, these slopes are, are, are here, and this road is here still, and they're all in original condition and original uh, structure as well. That was one of the questions I asked the guide that I uh, had take me around. Um, a lot of these roads and, and, and things are really tracks, right? They're, they're not cobblestone roads by any shape or, f shape or means. This, this terrain here is, uh, is all, uh, there were uh, windbreak uh, features, which is probably what this is. Let's grab the chart. Depression hexide is what this is. So this is depre a depression here. And I, I was of the opinion, and well, I had been told that right along this road, on both sides, this is where artillery, the British artillery was set up. Uh, they had rolled those suckers forward through those uh, brambles. I forget what they're called, it's a very specific name. But it, it, the, they were um, used as a windbreak to protect the crops. And this, this had this hedging right along here. So the, the road here today in, in, in the real world is flat and level and there's nothing along here. And uh, maybe, so maybe that's what this hedging is represent. This, these lines, this depression is representing the fact that the road is sunken below the, uh, the, the brush and the, the uh, foliage that would be along this section. So that's according to the guide anyway. Uh, he's been doing this for 20 years and read hundreds of books and uh, read both French and English uh, versions of the of what's going on. So, uh, Papillette, very different uh, structure for Papillette, right? So there it's just a two hex uh, area of foliage versus uh, this three hex uh, grouping, right? And also there's some, uh, some minor differences with the, with the roads. So let's have a quick look and, and compare the counters, just for argument's sake. So we've got our uh, Prussians here. Let's see if we can find the Prussians over here. I'll show them to you first. Ah, okay, we'll be guessing. Here we go. Here's the, the Prussian counters. Oh, let me see. I'm just checking what else we got here. Yeah, more Prussians. British, which is uh, these guys, so very similar, both muted uh, structure to them. Here's all the Allied forces, which is going to be somewhere. That's right, it's on the other side of this, isn't it? Horses there, we see those, and of course the French army, which is quite substantial here. Now the scale, the scale of forces is different here. I believe that, uh, that we can get down to a much smaller scale. Um, but once again, I, I don't have the rules in front of me, so I can't speak to the specifics. We see the cavalry squadrons and uh, formations. Let's see if the formation. Yeah, so this is right down at what it looks like to be the battalion level, perhaps. Can you read that? Counters look quite nice. When I f saw the first draft art for the counters, I was entirely put off uh, by the whole affair. Um, very faded pink looking British units in particular. They really uh, made this pop out a little bit more. Not super, super impressed with the icons here. You know, it is it is what it is, but artillery. Uh, I like the color of the Prussian forces, they look good. 
Right. So, <clears throat> and of course, no, uh, you know, no information counters. You're not using these stacking chits. Uh, you're using individual counters, so you'll uh, you'll break a unit down and uh, put another counter on on, on the map uh, in its place. I've got to adjust the camera. Bear with me here. There we go. So the the rules here uh, the rules here. I think when I um, from what I've been reading. I think they're trying to do some good things with this rules, this new rule system. I, 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 the reason why I picked this up is because I want to give it, want to give it a chance. I had read all sorts of negative commentary on Board Game Geek and read lots of uh, bitching and moaning on Consume World, and then of course there were the sycophantic fans uh, of this design uh, who were, uh, you know, were singing all of its praises and would not acknowledge or we acknowledge very few uh, issues with it. And I, I, I thought, you know, the, the fans on CSW seem to be more impressed than they were uh, unimpressed. So I thought we'd give it a shot and, and, uh, and try it out. And I'm not a huge DG Games fan, Decision Games fan, uh, in general, I, I think they are uh, you know, not necessarily doing the hobby very many favor, favors, but I think what we have here is uh, a really honest attempt to um, to uh, you know try and freshen the system up. Uh, just I, I, I this is really not a second edition to me. This is a brand new game, and I guess you can call it Wellington's Victory if you want. But the fact that it's coming from the progeny of SBI and it's the you know either the owners or the former owners or the you know the the new owners of the title so call themselves decision decision yeah decision games uh, they're they're rebooting all the old SBI titles I I, I kind of sticks in my craw that we're using we're using the the second edition. Nomenclature to say, hey, you know, this is going to be, this is an update of Wellington's Victory. Well, it's really, it's not. It's in name only Wellington's Victory. And it may be the more fantastic and spectacular system, but if you, were, if you don't do your homework, I think you're going to be sorely disappointed if you were looking for some better maps, an updated OB, and a few fixes to a few niggly rules you would be sorely disappointed because you are buying a completely different game. That takes nothing away from how the game plays. Uh, that's what we're here to find out, is work out whether this is going to play awesome. Uh, will I be able to understand the rules? Will I be able to play it correctly? Will I feel like I'm uh, Napoleon or Wellington making decisions and looks like I'll be doing lots of making lots of choices about facing and things like that and cavalry charges and artillery and, range and ranged fire and all that sort of good fun stuff. We'll get into all that. 15 minute turn increments, kind of crazy. So we'll see what happens. Uh, so that's all I really want to share with you. Uh, the good point here from uh, view from the turret that uh, indeed there can be too much art work on uh, some counters. So the clean, simple uh, effort here that Prolo uh, has, has put forth, I think will uh, pay dividends. So that's all I really wanted to do was share, uh, share a little bit of this with you and you know, we don't need uh, need to go much longer than that. So I appreciate you guys checking in and having a look at the two different versions of the game. And uh, sometime in 2018, we'll get this on the table and uh, we'll, we'll have at it. All right. On guard. Ciao.